it turns out that there was also a simpler way to solve this recurrence than the approach which we followed in the previous video. This simpler way does not exactly match the uh, approach that we followed where we have been replacing n by 2 to the power m at the beginning and then we convert the original recurrence into a recurrence for s of m which turns out to be much simpler than the original recurrence. So we followed that approach for three different problems and it's worked every single time. The approach that I'll describe here is a relatively faster approach than the one that we followed in the previous video but it may not work for other recurrences. It works for this recurrence particularly because of the form of this recurrence. Suppose we divide this recurrence throughout by n. What will we get? We will get t of n divided by n on the left hand side. On the right hand side, when we divide this term by n, we will get the square root of n in the denominator. This square root of n will cancel out with the n in the denominator and we will be left with t of the square root of n divided by the square root of n and when this n is divided by n we will be left with a 1. Now if you notice this recurrence you can see that there is a pattern to this recurrence. If we treat this function as just some function t prime of n, you can see that this function can be written as t prime of the square root of n. We are just replacing n by the square root of n over here. So we, if, if I can write this as t prime of n, I can write this as t prime of the square root of n. And this plus 1 remains as it is. Now this is a much simpler recurrence to solve. Assuming that this had been the original recurrence that we had been given, we would have followed the standard approach that we followed in previous videos to solve for such recurrences. We would have let n be 2 to the power m. So this would mean that t prime of 2 to the power m would have been t prime of 2 to the power m by 2 plus 1. And we would have expressed t prime of 2 to the power m as s of m and then the right hand side here would have been s of m by 2 plus 1. So we would have obtained this recurrence s of m is s of m by 2 plus 1. Now this recurrence can be solved using master theorem because a is 1, b is 2 and f of n is 1 and this recurrence has exactly the form s of m is a times s of m by b plus some function f of m this should be s of f of m now what is m to the power log base b of a that would be m to the power log base 2 of 1 which is m to the power 0 which is 1 so m to the power log base b of a has the same rate of growth as f of m this means that we are in case 2 of master theorem case 2 of master theorem tells us that the solution to such a recurrence 
is theta of m to the power log base b of a, which is just 1, multiplied by log of m. So that would just be theta of log of m. So if the solution to this recurrence is theta of log of m, what would be the solution to this recurrence from which we obtain this recurrence? Well, if we again express m back in terms of n, we'll get s of m is t prime of 2 to the power m, which is t prime of n. So this is t prime of n is theta of log of m. Log of m is because m is expressed in terms of n like this. Log of m well, firstly, we need to take the log of both sides over here. We'll get log of n is equal to m. And to get log of m, we will again need to take the log of both sides. So we'll get log of log of n is equal to log of m. So we can write log of m as log of log of n. This means t prime of n is theta of log of log of n. But t prime of n in turn was t of n by n. So t of n then would be n times some function that is growing at the rate of log of log of n. So if we have a function growing at the rate of log of log of n, and if we multiply it with n, it's going to grow at the rate of n times log of log of n. So that is what the solution to the original recurrence is. T of n is theta of n times log of log of n. Now this is the same solution that we obtained in the previous video using a relatively brute force way where we straight away substituted n as 2 to the power m in the original recurrence. And when we expressed the original recurrence in terms of m, we got a slightly more complicated recurrence than what we obtained over here because in this approach, we had one additional transformation step where we expressed, where we divided the original recurrence by n on both sides. And then exp we expressed t of n by n as some new function of n. By doing so, we obtained this recurrence, which we could tackle now by letting n be equal to 2 to the power n. And now we could transform this into s of m, which we could solve pretty quickly using master theorem. So in the previous few problems, we looked at recurrences which were already given to us in this form or some similar such form. The recurrence in this problem was slightly more complicated, but it could be transformed into this form using some simple techniques. Just division by n and letting t of n by n be some new function of n. So this problem was slightly more complicated than the earlier two problems because we had this extra transformation step needed to reduce this problem into a problem that we could then tackle using the approach that we already saw, uh, the change of variables approach which we saw in the past few videos. If we had, however, tried to directly use a change of variables at the beginning, we would have ended up with a slightly more complicated recurrence for S of M, which we could still solve by opening up the recurrence successively. 
kind of like the recursion tree method but without depicting the result the resulting summation diagrammatically instead we depicted the resulting summation in a single line we saw some patterns emerging and, and using those patterns we were able to derive the solution to this recurrence but you can see that the second approach was a bit faster even though we obtained the same solution using both approaches.